Hello, I'm Dr. Deepak Bhatt here in Amsterdam, or at least I'm here virtually, for ESC coverage for ACC.org. I'm here with two good friends and close colleagues, Dr. Gabriel Steg and Dr. Carolyn Lamb, and we're going to provide a quick recap of some of the fun stuff that we saw on day one. Well, welcome, Gabriel, and welcome, Carolyn. Thank you. So let me start off, Carolyn, with asking you about perhaps what was the biggest trial coming into ESC, Emperor Preserve. We already had a press release telling us the trial was positive. It's a trial of patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, diabetes, no diabetes. Can you tell our audience what it found and what it means to you and to their clinical practice? Oh my goodness. First of all, you know, I get goosebumps just thinking, I feel like I've waited my entire lifetime to say <laughs> that we finally got a really robustly positive trial in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and outcomes trial that was almost 6,000 patients with these patients with heart failure, ejection fraction more than 40%, as you said, diabetes and non-diabetic, and with a GFR above 20. And these patients were basically randomized to empagliflozin versus placebo, and over the follow-up of about 26 months, it was positive in terms of its primary outcome of cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalization, which was reduced by 21% compared uh, by empagliflozin compared to placebo. Now, that was the primary endpoint. There were two secondary endpoints as well in hierarchical order, and that was total heart failure hospitalizations that was reduced by 27% by empagliflozin. And the third, um, which is the second secondary endpoint, was the GFR slope, which was almost halved by empagliflozin versus placebo. So it's, it's really fantastic to finally be talking about a positive trial. Um, it's nice to see that in subgroup analyses, there was consistency uh, with age, sex, body mass index, diabetes or no diabetes, baseline GFR, baseline meds. Um, and it was also nice to see that the safety and tolerability was what we've seen in the diabetic cardiovascular outcomes trials in HEFREF trials. So it was really well tolerated, a little bit more hypotension, genital and urinary tract infections, but not severe. So altogether, I think a real winner. Um, we're going to have to see how this may impact practice and impact guidelines, but really happy to be able to say this. Yeah, no, I can see how excited you are. That's perfect. I was excited as well. Gabriel, were you excited? I mean, you know, you and Bert Pitt and I were involved with a pair of trials, the soloist and scored, where in fact, we had seen a reduction in HEFPEF that was uh, uh, statistically significant as, as published in the journal. So, you know, we sort of did have a taste of what was to come here. Were you surprised by anything in Emperor Preserved? And, and another question people have asked me was about the mortality. Some people are a bit uh, bothered mm. by no significant p-value there. What are your thoughts on those points? Well, a couple of comments. First of all, yes, uh, I think it's a great day for uh, cardiology and for patients that we have indeed robust evidence, uh, un unquestionable evidence of a treatment that improves outcomes in HEFPEF. So that's that's number one. Uh, um, and indeed, it's it, it, it was really uh, tantalizing to see the results of SCORED and SOLOIST, which indeed suggested that across the entire continuum of uh, ejection fraction uh, patients with uh, uh, di diabetes did derive benefit and patients without diabetes and, and, and with HEFPEF uh, would also derive benefit. But I think the, the, the evidence of a dedicated trial in HEFPEF from Emperor uh, Preserved is really uncontrovertible. And this will change practice and this will change guidelines. Second observations is SGLT2 inhibitors. It's the gift that gives, keeps on giving. I mean, <laughs> improves renal outcomes, improve cardiac outcomes. Uh, it seems like you can't miss, you can't fail a trial with this class of drugs. Uh, of course, it's going to be uh, uh, important to wait for future other trials with other uh, agents in the class. But I think everybody will be very optimistic that these trials will work with even, even other agents. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's uh, again, also important from that standpoint. 
the mortality finding is of course important, uh, but uh, I don't think we should ask too much of a single trial. I think we have to remember that heart failure is a chronic condition, takes patients to the hospital, has a tremendous economic burden and, and clinical burden on patients and reducing, uh, improving outcomes and reducing hospital visits and hospital admissions in the first place is already a major achievement given that everything else that we've had so far has failed or come short. Yeah, no, I agree with your points. Uh, especially if we look at the SGLT2 inhibitor class as a whole, there's a mortality reduction and CV mortality reduction in patients that are high risk enough. So uh, Carolyn, uh, maybe just in 15 seconds, you can tell us the pooled analysis that was presented here of Emperor Preserved and Emperor Reduced. What additional insights does that give us? Yeah, uh, here it gets a little bit complicated though. So the emperor pooled analysis basically took emperor reduced and emperor preserved and looked across the entire ejection fraction spectrum and was geared towards the primary outcome of the renal um, outcome here. Okay, that was how the alpha spending turned out and so on. So it was interesting because there was an interaction between preserved and reduced the trial and the outcome in that the renal endpoint appeared to be robustly met in emperor reduced, um, but not so much in emperor preserved. Um, and this was really sort of confusing. And we're still trying to wrap our heads around it because as I said, we saw the GFR slope effect in emperor preserved, which didn't seem to translate to a renal endpoint reduction. And we're talking about the halving of the renal endpoint in emperor reduced versus no effect in emperor preserved. Now, Milton Packer um, did present sort of different definitions of the renal endpoint and showed that the renal outcome was sensitive to that. In other words, using a more sensitive uh, sort of uh, endpoint with a, asking for a greater reduction of GFR 50 rather than 40% adding renal death and so on, then you start to see this very interesting um, ejection fraction dependency um, of this renal endpoint. And in fact, you see it for the heart failure outcome as well. Heart failure, not the primary with cardiovascular death, but the total heart failure hospitalization. And what this shows, interestingly, is the same thing that we saw over the ejection fraction spectrum for the ARNIs, Paradigm and Paragon, which is that there seems to be an attenuation of effect at the higher ejection fraction ranges at about above 65%. So uh, that's, that's where we sort of go, okay, so do these drugs work in the end? Entire universe of heart failure? Right. Or are we seeing again a similar phenomenon where we've got these supernormal ejection fraction heart failure where nothing seems to work? Yeah, no, it's a great point. I'll, I'll just mention parenthetically in Solist and Scored when we pulled the data and back that benefit Gabriel mentioned was really seen throughout the full extent of EF, even right. in that greater than 60%, it was a consistent benefit. So maybe that's the SGLT1, maybe it's differences between trials. Who knows? Uh, Gabriel, maybe we should move on to the next trial, which is Guide HF, which was another important late breaker presented, uh, looking at uh, PA pressure monitoring with a miniature device, the CardioMEMS device. And uh, do you want to just tell the audience quickly what that showed and what does that mean to us? Yeah, it, it was really an important study that looked at whether there was benefit to guiding management of patients with heart failure via the CardioMEMS device as opposed to routine care. So all patients underwent placement of this PA device, this PA sensor, and then were randomly assigned to usual care or management guided by PA transmission on a daily basis. Um, to make a long story short, the primary composite outcome of uh, uh, CV deaths, heart failure hospitalizations, or urgent heart failure consultations was not met uh, overall in the trial. And the investigators did a very sophisticated analysis looking at the effect that the COVID-19 pandemic had on the trial. Uh, approximately three quarters of the data were acquired prior to the pandemic and a quarter during or after the pandemic. And to make a long story short, a pre-specified pre-pandemic analysis actually showed benefit with a statistically significant reduction in the primary composite outcome with the guided management. But then the pandemic data erased that benefit. There was loss of uh, contrast between the treatment arms during the pandemic for 
a variety of reasons that the investigators elegantly explored in a, a very sophisticated and detailed analysis. Uh, 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 and it relates to the usual uh, things that you would expect during a, during a pandemic. It's more difficult to transmit data. It's more difficult to get uh, patients to transmit the data and, and act on them. It's more difficult to get the physician's attention and information through. Uh, and so all of that contributed to the loss of contrast. So. I don't, I'm, I'm a little puzzled about what to think because my gut feeling is that this seems to work. It was just derailed by the pandemic. It's a shame. And fortunately, I don't think it's the last trial that's gonna be derailed by the pandemic as, as we know. Yeah, you know, I was a interventional co at my site uh, putting the device in and I, I like doing the procedure, but you know, the, um, the pandemic, uh, I, I don't think we enrolled a single patient actually after the pandemic. Before that, we were doing a pretty good job enrolling. So yeah, the pandemic's been really disruptive and you know, I, I hope the technology gets another shot at the same question so it can answer it definitively. Well, it looks like we've really uh, run over time here and should probably wrap it up. I, I just will mention one other thing to the audience. The ESC heart failure guidelines came out. And even if you're not from Europe, those are great guidelines. You know, we're talking a lot about SGLT2 inhibitors. They really give them a ringing endorsement. So, you know, among all the trial coverage uh, that we've got up at acc.org, I'd say also look at the summary of those guidelines as well. Very useful for clinical practice. I'm Dr. Deepak bot for acc.org. Thank you so much for joining us.